Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my experience at Colston Girls School and sixth form. And I wanted to do this video because I feel like people are interested. It's a, it's a different kind of school, it's an all-girls school, so it's not an ordinary mixed academy. And my school used to be private, and it still kind of is, like... It's not private in the sense that you have to pay, but it's still like taught in the same way and the school run as if it was a private school basically. So I want to just tell you guys a bit about it and I hope you enjoy the stories. Let's get on to the video. So I want to start off with a little bit of backstory to Colston Girls. So Colston Girls have been open for like 127 years now so it's a really old school and the building is beautiful it's a very old building and like it looks like Hogwarts when you go into it cause it's very old and wooden and they got like this wooden hall with like organs and the stage and like it, it's really nice but Colston Girl is mainly known for being a private school when when I started it was a private school and then it became an academy so now it's open to the public which I think is much more much better because the school is now much more ethnic and diverse because before when it was private it mainly people people from higher class areas mainly middle class white girls that went there but now are very ethnic people have travel from all over the UK to go there and it is just a very diverse and brilliant school GCSEs you're made to study a language so I study Spanish and I also did history, art and business. Business one was definitely my favourite, I comment. And then I also did triple science, math and English. And then at A levels I did psychology, biology and business, which you would have seen in my previous video or the one before that where I got my results <laughs> you, can, you can give us and watch that and then considering our hours so when you're at GCSE and you're in a high school our hours were I think they were 8.13 till quarter to 4 so it's quite a long school day but then because our school day is longer we get longer ho holidays so our summer holiday was 9 weeks so we woke up, I think it's three weeks earlier than the average school. So we had a lot more time off, which was lovely. But also, it's a bit annoying when you're off school and your friends from other schools are still in school. It gets a bit annoying, but it is really nice to have extra time off. It was quite funny. Um, I feel like Colston is known for like having really good school trips and it does. They are very expensive. My first trip was going to Paris in year seven and that was like a compulsory trip that everyone had to go on because we all got taught French. So it was an experience for us all. And that was really good. I actually really enjoyed that trip. The only thing that I hate about it is the amount of bread that we eat is not I hate French bread. <laughs> like, I can't eat a French, a French, what is it, a baguette. I can't eat baguette anymore because I ate so much on that trip that I, I hate it now. But other than that, it was an amazing trip. Um, yeah, so it definitely knew for the trip. I feel like over the years, they kind of, um, made the trip smaller and not as amazing 
So every year they still go on a skiing trip and they usually take a class abroad to whatever language they are studying but they didn't do that anymore and they do more like teamwork building camps so it's abroad more in the UK which is also it's alright I, I prefer going abroad but it's still alright So I have my, I still have my uniform, but it's in like the loft packed away and stuff, so I can't tear it. But we had to wear a navy blue kilt with a white shirt, a blue jumper with the school's like crest. And then we wore, we had to wear blazers all the time. And you had to ask if you were like, if you took it off, it could only be in the in class. You had to wear it everywhere in school, and then you could either wear knee high socks that were navy or navy tights with black or navy school shoes. And they were really strict on what sort of shoes you had. They they would give you like a list of shoes and where to buy them and you have to go buy them and then you also have to buy the P kit which used to be a kilt no not a kilt a skirt for summer and then jogging bottoms for winter with like a polo t-shirt and a jumper and then we also had swimming I mean, you do swimming in year 7 to 8 so you buy like the CGS swimming costume and this hat and you got like a different kind of hat depending on what level swimmer you are so if you couldn't swim it was red and if you could it was white and pink so yeah there was a lot to buy a lot <laughs> and they're very strict with these uniforms so your, your uniform was checked every day before you go into school and most of the time the girls would get asked to roll the, roll the skirts down because the skirts were cute so they were really really long especially when you're in year 7 and you're pretty small the kilts are so long so a lot of kids like roll them up to make them like normal length but sometimes they would get a bit short and you'd get asked to roll it down to the knee length which was okay but I mean not that big of a deal. Um, nowadays the school mostly strict on coats. You're not allowed to wear coats inside. You're not allowed to have your hair dyed. So I probably wouldn't get away with my hair being like this colour that long. Because it is blonde they might allow it but they don't like any unnatural colours. So if you dyed your hair red then they make you go and dye it back basically. You're also not allowed to wear much jewellery or ha or have acrylics on or have your nails painted. They have to be like clear or French manicure nails. Which is quite annoying I think because it's nice to be able to make yourself different from everyone else and like make yourself an individual by having different things. But everyone kind of looks the same at school because we all have to wear the same thing. Which I get, but it's still nice to have like a bit of colour on your nails or something. But yeah, so that's the uniform. Next question is, did they make you sing or go to church? And the answer is yes. In year 7 you're made to be in the year 7 choir, which is the whole year choir. So you sing in the choir for a year, and then if you are a good singer or if you want to carry on singing, you can have lessons, which I did, or you can join the chamber choir that the, they sing at all the events. And then we go to church three times, year 
one for commemoration day, one for prize day, and what's the other one? The one other day that you only do for a certain amount of years, but you go and you get I know a bread day because they give you like a loaf of bread and it's really nice to eat during the day. So that's what I know as bread day but I don't can't remember what it's actually called. <laughs> but you go to church three or four times a year and that's it. And when you're at church you sing hymns you sing hymns that are like well just hymns that you you sing in the church. But other than that, you don't really get made to do anything at church or sing. And again, you don't have to sing if you don't want to. You can just... I mean, you have to take part, but if you don't want to sing, then you don't have to. Or if it's against your religion to sing in a Christian church, then you don't have to sing. So, yeah. The next topic I want to talk about is friendships. So... Going into school, I always thought that I like make a group of friends, and then we kind of stick together throughout the whole school years and the whole five years. That did not happen. <laughs> the friends that I started off with, to be honest, I don't even think they were my friends. I think they, they kind of were made to be my friends, which is quite sad. But I I do vaguely remember a meeting. <laughs> that these girls were made to go to to try and be my friend and I didn't want to make friends that way I thought it was really 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 weird so I kind of went out and made friends my own way but the, the friends that I did make in year 7 I'm still friends with most of them today but my closer friendship group that I have now is friends that I made probably in the last year so yeah you it really depends on what subject you, you join, but mine personally, I change subject groups every year. So, yeah, I definitely didn't keep the same subject group. Um. The next question is, are all girls' schools bitchy? And I think there is definitely bitchiness in an all-girls school, without a doubt. I mean, I see my fair share of bitchiness, but I don't think it's anything that isn't too difficult to deal with. It's very petty bitchiness, and it doesn't usually last for like 10 minutes. So whatever it is, it's easily resolved and it, it will pass by very quickly and things will either get resolved or they'll just move on and forget about it. So, yeah, i say it is a bit bitchy, but it gets forgotten about in seconds. Like, people just forget about it and move on. When you're in the lower, lower years, you kind of hold on to it a bit. But, I mean, when you get to, like, the last year, you're like, oh, but, like... Whatever, it's not a big deal. School lunches. See, I did like my school lunches, but I only, I only liked them on certain days. So I liked Friday because it was fish and chips, and that was delicious. And then we had like a, sp a Spanish day, and they made like churros and donuts. And that was a, such a good day. But other than those days, we kind of, like, brought in our own food and then just ate it in our classroom. And we, what we, we would do is we would all buy, like, a little sharing thing and then all put it together at lunch and just have, like, a big feast. And it was so good. And then next door to our school, we have, um, like, a pizza delivery place. So what we would, be, we would do, we would call, call them and order pizza and then get the six formers to go and get it for us and bring it in. Best idea in the world, seriously, that was the... That, when we make it out, we could do that, that was the best thing we could do for lunch. Pizza, warm, so nice. Okay, 
Okay, so I want to talk about one scenario where my school, basically, they had those lifts that when you get in them, you have to hold the button down, and if you let go, then it stops and it doesn't move. And so in year seven, I was like one of their first kind of severely disabled students. So they would maybe use the, 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 the lift to like try, try it out. And one of the first times I got in it, we were going up and the person let go of the button and I started panicking so I was like, oh my god, I'm stuck in the lift. And it's like a really small lift, like it fits two people basically and that's it. And I started panicking and I had like a panic attack. And then I was like, okay, I'm fine, I just gotta calm down and like I got out and I calmed down. And then another teacher went up to me and was like, oh, it's okay. The ambulance on his way, and they'll take you to the hospital. And I freaked out again because I was like, "What's wrong with me? Like, is it? Am I like, why do they call the ambulance? What's going on? Like, I, I was so sh- I was petrified that they called the ambulance because I was, I was just like, am I hurt? Am I dying? Like, what, what's going on? But in the end, they like took told the ambulance to go because I didn't need it. I, just, I literally just had a panic attack and that, that was it. So I was like, why the hell was that ambulance coming? But I thought, now that I look back, I found it really funny because they just overreacted to everything that I, I did, basically. So, next thing, we're going to talk about bullying. So I, I'm not going to say stuffered, but I, I experienced bullying at that school. I had two experiences, both times I felt the school didn't do much, they kind of just brushed it under the rug and kind of like told the person to stop and then just like cut, like just to see what, what, what happened. Obviously the person didn't stop and it kept going so that I had to get involved and I had to get my mum involved and try and sort it out ourselves. So I think the school definitely needs to work on with how they deal with those situations. A lot of schools say that they have a zero bullying policy. What was it? Zero, zero bullying tolerance. That zero, to, zero tolerance to bullying. That's it. So they said that they had zero. Oh, fuck. Zero tolerance to bullying, but they don't always know how to then reinforce that. So, if I give you a scenario, so the last time this happened, I kind of had enough and I was ready to like move on from this person. So, in the end, I had to go to her house and speak to her dad and talk to them that, that way because the school wouldn't do it. And then a few months later when everything was t- sorted and we moved on, they were in this meeting for us to get together and talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it. She didn't want to apologize, so nothing came from it. Really, we just sat there and kind of silent do nothing. So I think the school could go about dealing with these things a lot, a lot better. Because they don't always know how to deal with situations like that, I think, so that's one tip that I would give, definitely. The next thing is teaching. So, the teachers at CGS are really good, I don't, I can't lie about that, they are really good teachers. The only thing that I found hard was that a lot of them there's a large teacher turnover, so a lot of teachers go on maternity leave and paternity leave, and then we get replacement teachers that aren't as good as our original teachers. So we find that hard to get used to new teachers all the time, and it's quite difficult when like a PE teacher is teaching you English because they don't understand what English involves. So yeah, that was the only trouble. But then again, the teachers are really useful at CGS. They're really supportive. 
and I kind of use some teachers as like my counsellors I guess to like confide in and ask for advice and like see how they would deal with the situation so they are really nice teachers and for those that see us now so my favourite male teacher is Mr Martin he is the best I literally love him. I'm going to miss him so much. He's so funny. We have like a secret handshake that we do it every time we see each other. And I, love, I love that. It's so cool. And then my favourite female teacher is probably Miss Lipia. I think she's left now, which I'm so sad about. But she was like the best teacher, I think. She, she just like loves to tell stories about like everything and like her dog and her family and like I don't know I just love her she's so like, fun and yeah she's so cute <laughs> okay next thing okay this is a big one because people always think that because it's an all girls school everyone there is gay I can confirm that's not true people always say that they don't want to go to that school because they don't want to turn gay that is not the case it's your option whether you are gay or not for starters and the school isn't going to turn you gay because it's an all girls school I mean I have many straight friends from CDS I do admit a lot of the girls are gay or bisexual or transgender or there's a lot of things that are on the spectrum that there are also straight people there so yeah people often use it as an excuse to like not gay and they're like oh yeah I don't want to be gay but firstly being gay isn't there's nothing wrong with being gay and the school does not turn you gay just to confirm that but yeah I personally love being at all girls school because I find girls it's easier to get along with than guys not easier but it's just easier to relate with things so like I don't know so like if you're on your period there's so many girls that can relate to that like everyone can relate to it or if you don't have a pad, you can literally ask anyone around you and then they'll have one. And even though girls are really bitchy, it's just really good friendships that you get. And it's like a kind of like sisterly bond that you form a girl. And it's just really sweet and nice. And even though there's drama, I feel like there's less drama than if there were boys involved. So that's also a good point, totally. Um, and then, as I said, my sixth form was mixed, so it had boys and girls. But it only opened to boys in my second year, so there were only two boys when I was there. Apparently now they're like 12, which is an improvement. But yeah, there's still not many boys, but even the boys that join, they're all really nice, so. Having a disability, did you get support in class? And the answer is yes, I did. So, for my whole, well actually not my whole, day, yeah, for my whole, so I was at CGS for seven years. So for the whole seven years I had a scribe in my class which is a person that writes my notes for me and that just saved me time because it, it takes me very long to write and copy notes from like the board so if there's someone else writing the notes for me then I could take time to mem memorize them and go over it at home so it was really useful um, more towards A level things became more online and di di digitalized. So I only had a scribe in biology, and then the other two were mostly online, or I did it myself because they're pretty simple. Um, 
I also, with the exams, I, I got extra time. And I also got the choice of having a scribe, a laptop, or writing myself, which is very useful to have the option. And on the day, I didn't know how I feel. And for example, if I had like a long essay exam, it might be useful to take a break and scribe and then go back to writing and do it myself. So it, it would nice to have the option, definitely. Mr. Perry, God, I think you could just Google that. I'm not going to talk about Mr. Perry. Jesus. Um. Is there anything that you would like to change about your experience at Colston Girls? Um. I personally think that my experience was like a great experience. And I do love Colston Girls so much. Um, if I had to change anything, it'd probably be that I could do horse riding during PE because I I couldn't really do much in PE. I would often made to be an umpire or a referee or something like that. But if I was able to go horse riding during that time, then it would be a lot better for me and more beneficial than being a referee or an umpire. Um, other than that, I think, well actually, I think it would be good if, for people with disabilities, if they were able to, with exams, I found that if I was able to move my exam to the, like, the afternoon or the morning or switch two exams around, it would benefit me much more because my my physical ability changes so often and my condition affects the way that I like not learn but the way that I, I write and the way that my exams are done. So if I was able to adapt my exam time timetable to fit me and my body, I think I would have done a lot better than what I did. But that's something that we argued about a lot and that couldn't be resolved. But if it was resolved, I think I would have got a lot better grades. So that's one thing that I would have loved to change if I could. But other than those two, I think they're already the only things which are quite positive. And the last question is, would you recommend CGS? And the answer is yes, definitely. I think CGS is a brilliant school with brilliant teachers. They really do look after you there. Don't get me wrong, they have their downfalls, but so does every school. But I think if you're a person that is wanting to get good grades and are, is quite academic and happy to live that lifestyle, then definitely go to CGS, it's great. And you'll definitely get the grades that you want or need. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the video for today really. I hope you enjoy my little talk about my experience at CGS. And if you want to know any more about it, please just contact me and ask, or leave it in the comments down below and I'll reply. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!